Dear brothers and sisters, there is a famous Korean poem called Prelude written by Yoon Dong-ju. There is a verse that says, Let me have no shame under the heaven until I die. Even winds among the foliage, foliage paint my heart. This poem centers around the Christian poet's desire to live purely while maintaining his religious conscience even in dark times. In these end times filled with sins, I think that everyone who desires to maintain pure faith without being clouded by the fleshly world will live each day with the same heart as this poet. If you are a Christian with a goal for New Jerusalem, you will self-reflect every day and diligently wash your robes. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 says, So that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent, children of God above of reproach, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. God the Father wishes for all His children to be blameless and innocent. That way, you can become the light in the world and a true child who can enter New Jerusalem. May this sermon serve as a checkpoint to see how far you have gone towards the goal of New Jerusalem. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will swiftly fix any shortcomings and run more vigorously towards New Jerusalem. Dear brothers and sisters, the first half of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 5 writes, Every word of God is tested. What does it mean by tested? Tested refers to being blameless, and blameless is defined as pure and perfect. A blameless person generally means a virtuous person. In the book of Job, Job is described as blameless and upright, God-fearing, and someone who has turned away from evil. Though Job hadn't gotten rid of all the evil in his heart, he was someone who didn't commit sinful acts before God. Job displayed many virtuous deeds, looking after widows, orphans, and the like. So, among the people of the Old Testament times, he was acknowledged as a blameless person. But the level of blamelessness that God wants from us is not just that. God not only desires us to be blameless in these, but He wants us to cast off evil and have a heart that is pure without blameless. blemish. Though this kind of heart is pure, it's still not completely perfect. When the fruits of Spirit have filled a clean and pure heart, it is it can be labeled as perfect. Sanctified heart means you are in a state where you have cast off evil and sins. You are sanctified and pure and clean. But in order to be perfect, you have to do what it tells you to do, what it tells you to keep. You have to fill your heart with such spiritual fruits. You just don't just have a goodness to some extent, but you have to fill your heart with um, per- goodness and those fruits of spirit. Only then can you be labeled as perfect. God wants us to have both such purity and perfection. Elijah, Enoch, Abraham, and Moses are people who are both pure and perfect. But the purest and most perfect one, namely the most blameless one out of all, is our Lord Jesus. Today's passage completely reflects the blamelessness of Jesus. If you wholly make bread of today's passage, you'd be able to become truly blameless. Namely, you become men of whole spirit. May you completely embed these words in your heart as we go through Jesus' blameless in depth. The first aspect of Jesus' blamelessness is that He did not quarrel with anyone. During His ministry, Jesus never, Jesus never clashed nor quarreled with anyone. There were no complaints or disputes, but only peace. 
as He accomplished all things. In the worldly sense, Jesus grew under the care of good parents and always obeyed God's words from a young age. Through His public ministry, Jesus preached the gospel of heaven and healed all kinds of sickness and infirmities. He was a friend to the neglected, marginalized, giving new hope in life. Despite Jesus only doing good, there were people who rejected, opposed, and tried to capture and kill Him at any cost. These were the priests and the high priests, scribes and the Pharisees who had vested interests in society. John chapter 3 verse 20 says, For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. Like the verse, these people couldn't tolerate the, couldn't tolerate the true light of Jesus as their evil kept being revealed. So they tested Jesus with various words in an attempt to trap Him by any means. Jesus knew of their evil intent. Jesus healed people like leprosy, people with a s h o r e of the hand on the Sabbath. But the people condemned Him, saying that He violated the Sabbath. He tried, they tried to find fault with Him. God, uh, Jesus did only good things. And He Jesus did good things on the Sabbath. But peop, those people condemned Him, saying that He, Jesus, worked on the Sabbath. Jesus worked for God. God told us not to do physical things on the Sabbath. Not, but as their evil was revealed, and God's works were not manifested by them, That's why they try to kill him, destroy him, by making all kinds of plot. But what did our Jesus respond? Jesus knew, knew of their evil intent, but never treated them with hatred or hard feelings. Some people try to hide their evil intent and try, say things that Even though you know their intent, but when we say, I know your intent, what you are trying to say, but Jesus never did that. They, Jesus tried to give, him, give them an awakening, but He, he didn't point, out, point them out directly. He didn't quarrel or dispute with them. Jesus only spoke words of goodness and wisdom so they could comprehend God's true will. When they were Unable to have an awakening, Jesus didn't argue or quarrel, but rather remained silent. In order to achieve the providence of salvation through the cross, what did Jesus do when He was arrested by the Jewish guards and taken to stand trial? Despite being innocent, Jesus didn't refute any word nor protest. Other than, other than the few words to underline God's providence, Jesus didn't say anything even when given the opportunity to defend. Sometimes we want to explain ourselves, speak our minds to make others understand. But if we do that, awakening depending on how much a person has goodness and truth, he can have an awakening. It, it, dif- it's different. it differs by person. We shouldn't try to change another person with words or advice. This itself is stupid. That's why a married couple who are one flesh, they quarrel all their life. Or they just don't talk. They live like they are not even a family member. It's not result by words. It's not about our teaching. It's not about our advice. You may think you have to say more, but it doesn't work. Our Jesus knew people's heart. So even though He taught the truth, He demonstrated these, and through the signs and wonders, He bore many fruits. So He didn't, while, even while He didn't say much, Jesus intended for them to change themselves, intended for those good-hearted people to change. 
even those Jesus only explained when another person was ready to accept his words but otherwise he just uh, walked away it's not that Jesus didn't have any words to say he didn't want to point out or reveal another person's evil and our shepherd also said that during the trials our shepherd and Jesus, uh, the shepherd told me that uh, if another person doesn't listen to you, if another person insists on his opinions, the shepherd advised me that I don't have to speak to him anymore. I just have to... It doesn't mean I have to hate him. I... I don't have to, I didn't have to, if disputes occur, if arguments occur, people just begin to, at that time, it's better to not to speak to him or her. It is a wisdom. That's what our Jesus did. Despite being treated unfairly, Jesus didn't quarrel with anyone in order to completely fulfill God's will. He took pity on those who were instigated by the enemy devil and Satan to condemn, harm, capture, and kill him. And Jesus interceded for them. Dear, dear brothers and sisters, despite someone not harming you or putting you in a difficult position, are there not some of you who feel uncomfortable simply because he is not to your liking? When your thoughts and opinions differ from others, do any of you clash with them, harbor ill feelings, and argue or quarrel? Do you tolerate injustice to a certain degree, but quarrel when it's repeated? Have you ever, have you ever not been able to stand someone or something? Have you ever thought of making someone realize their wrongdoings, even if that meant butting heads? This is self-righteousness. This is different from God's righteousness. I will talk about we are learning about the God's righteousness and your self-righteousness of Job. Book of Job. What we think is right what we think is when we insist on our being right but when disputes occur when peace is broken then no matter how right you are this is not God's righteousness the book of Job and also through the message on blamelessness we have to know that we have to examine whether we are insisting on our being right or we have our hard feelings or real feelings. This is also what causes quarreling. So we have to cast them off completely. Then we can resemble the heart of the Lord who was blameless. Some people want to clash with others to give them an awakening. It would be great if the other person would realize his fault and repent, but what if he doesn't? What was the outcome? You speak to him with a good intention and, and, you, and you justify yourself. I had to do this to change him. And you, the peace, but the result is the peace breaks and negative feelings pile up to the point where you are not on good terms with them. Our Lord would have said as much if that meant the evildoers would realize and repent. But, but since his words would only serve as an argument, he declined to answer any accusations. I believe none of you. I believe none of our members would raise their voice, get angry, or quarrel with others as you are of mature faith. But it's also important to know that quarreling isn't just 
getting angry and shouting. Though not visible on the outside, those who have a disapproving attitude towards others who don't fit their idea or those who insist on their own righteousness still have quarreling in their heart. You Another, if another person is gentle, quarreling quarrels don't, doesn't occur. But the, even though even though quarrels don't occur on the outside, but inside you insist on your being right, and that's so you have to look inside. You have to look at your inner self. You have to know when these things occur, and you have to shatter yourself, and then you will not quarrel with anyone. Some people, you may be gentle sometimes, but in specific situations, you are not. You have, you may have your self righteousness. So you have to become more beautiful and more mature. Even if you don't dispute or quarrel against people with different opinions, talking about your annoyance to others around you means you still have an attitude of quarreling in the heart. You may have ill feelings. Even though you don't directly speak your ill feelings, you just... When you share your ill feelings with others, would others be happy? You, you don't fight with another person, but inside you, you have such attributes of quarreling. You are discussing about him with others. You are gossiping about him with others. That's why you have attributes with which you can have a quarrel. As peace has broken within the heart, that means you haven't been able to achieve peace with anyone, everyone. We have to pursue peace and sanctification with all men so we can see the faith of the Lord. But if peace is broken in your heart and you have ill feelings, that means peace is broken. That means you have broken peace. and you are agitated with ill feelings provoked. This is great evil. You may think, I just have some ill feelings. I just have some hard feelings. I just feel don't... He, I don't get along with them. Some people just fight themselves like that. It's not good. If you have ill feelings, if you just uh, ignore such ill feelings, but you have to look inside your heart and deep roots of untruth and pray to cast them off. With that process, you can resemble our Lord's blamelessness. If you still have quarreling in the heart with ill feelings and self-righteousness, it's important to realize that you are to blame for the quarreling. You are to blame for the quarreling. Instead of blaming others, we need to realize that there is still an element of evil within us that makes us have these ill feelings. Also, we have to root out such evil from within. It's not because others give you a hard time or because you are trying to go against, they are trying to go against you. It's because you are still a small vessel, unable to embrace others, have a framework that makes noise when something collides with it. If something were to hit a pile of cotton, would it make a sound? If a bowl contains clear, clean water, it would still be clear and clean no matter how many times you shake it. In certain situations, if your peace of mind breaks and fleshly feelings along with forms of evil arise, it's because there are still remnants of flesh in the heart. God allows you to discover evil through refinement, interactions with different people, and various duties. If you are humble and self-reflecting in all that you do and don't tolerate even the slightest bit of untruth and cast it off, then you will be able to achieve blamelessness like Jesus. Then there will be no one who you can understand nor embrace. You will be able to warmly embrace even the ones that try to clash with you. When you achieve this heart, you will always have peace. When you achieve this heart, you will always have peace within and be truly happy 
above all. Since heaven is already in your heart, you are happy no matter whom you meet and always full of joy. As God the Father loves you, He will walk on your behalf if you encounter any difficulties. Even if you don't dispute to prove a point, Father God is on your side and causes all things to work together for good. May you all receive these blessings from God in everything you do. Everyone, our heart is, our heart vessel can be enlarged or be shortened or be, if once you enlarge your vessel, even something that made you feel bad no longer does. A few months ago, someone, I heard that someone, something about me, and I heard that. But, excuse me, I, our shepherd also said some workers, when they complained, the shepherd considered them cute. And I also sympathize with him. Some church workers, I heard about some church workers' complaints, but and they want to be loved and they want to be recognized. As I try to understand them, I also consider them cute, like our shepherd did. That's how I could sympathize with the shepherd. So I had a smile on my face with that thought. But before, I was a little bit saddened. I was a little bit grieved. I must have thought, I didn't do that, but why these church workers talk about that? But I just understood that situation, and I tried to figure out these church workers' heart. That's how they thought that way. With that understanding, I just smiled. It didn't affect my feelings. I didn't think like, I'm distressed. Oh, someone is bothering me. Why is that people... I, I mean, even if someone distresses you, you shouldn't be agitated by that. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't waver. Then what should you do? You have to, you have no quarreling. You have, you should have, you should have no quarreling. You should have no frustration or ill feelings in your heart. If you have no such evil attributes, even when someone tries to attack you, there's no noise. You are, will you remain peaceful? Let's say your kid, your little kids, whines and cries before you, then would their parents get irritated? Kids complain about because they want to sleep, because they want to, because they want to sleep, they cry and whine, and then how would their parents respond? They would embrace them, they would hold them in their heart, hold them in their bosom, and They don't complain. They just uh, put them to sleep. The same way, even if someone bothers you, you have to wait for them. You have to embrace them with goodness and love. And you have to, you have to do that with the heart of the Lord. But if your heart is small, noises are made, and quarrels arise, you have to keep this in mind. You shouldn't put the blame on your environments or others. But what you have to do is to change yourself. Dear brothers and sisters, the second aspect of Jesus' blameless is, is that He didn't cry out. Crying out comes from a desire to reveal and flaunt yourself. In other words, thinking highly of yourself as a certain type of person and, desire, and desiring others to recognize you and give you special treatment. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, manifested countless wonders and signs, but acted humbly, not flaunting at all. John chapter 70 verse 4 writes, I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Jesus only gave glory to Father God. 
Jesus sometimes revealed that He was the Son of God who came down to this earth as a Savior. It was because people could be saved with this belief. People with good hearts saw the words and signs that followed and believed that Jesus was the Son of God and the Savior. But people with evil hearts didn't recognize that Jesus was the Son of God due to their evil. Instead, they slandered Jesus, saying that He dishonored, he dishonored God. Not caring about the slanders and persecutions, and regardless of whether He would receive recognition from the people, Jesus silently walked the path of suffering on the cross to become the perfect Savior. As the Son of God, the Creator, Jesus even collaborated with the Father for the creation in the beginning. Jesus walked the path of the cross with gratitude in spite of being scorned and despised by mere humans. This is to be without self or without ego. Um, additionally, when Jesus hung on the cross, people said in Matthew chapter 27, verses 42 and 43, He saved others. He cannot save Himself. He is the King of Israel. Let Him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in Him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue Him now if He delights in Him. For He said, I am the Son of God. Even in that dire situation, Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't have the slightest desire to cry out. He only obeyed God's will till death, until death. If you obey God's will with such blamelessness, God will exalt and give you recognition even if you don't put in your own efforts. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 tell us, for this reason also, God highly exalted Him, bestowed on Him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Those in heaven refers to heavenly hosts and angels, and those on earth means all people on the face of the earth, and the enemy devil and darkness. And those under the earth signifies people locked up in haste, the lower grave. As said, the enemy devil and Satan and dirty demons have no choice but to obey if you command in the name of Jesus Christ. The obedience of our blameless Lord fulfilled the justice for that. Everyone, our Lord was the Son of God. You may think He's the Son of God and He performed power and he, that's why He became our Savior. His death on the cross, by His the death on the cross, He became our Savior. And by enduring, by doing goodness and love, even in the suffering, He he fulfilled the justice that way. That's how He shined the light. Even Jesus, even though He was the Son of God, he, not, nothing was done automatically for Him. He had to lower Him. He had to be in the low, low place. He had to suffer all that. He had to serve, serve. This is how He became our Savior. All of us, in order to enjoy the authority as God's son and daughters, we have to do what Jesus did without circumcising your heart. If you just, uh, if you just stick, any diseases and sicknesses will disappear when commanded in the name of the Lord because all darkness has to obey before the name of the Lord. Then what's the reason when it doesn't leave despite being commanded in the name of the Lord? According to the justice, it doesn't because of a violation of God's laws. Because the one who prays has violated the law of God, it, it does not leave. God clearly told the snake, the enemy devil, 
to eat dust forever. This means to feed on mankind who was formed of dust. But this, is, but this doesn't include people who abide by God's words. Those who break God's laws and commandments, commit evil, and practice lawlessness are controlled by the enemy devil. This is why diseases and disasters are brought to people who live in sin. We know that those who live in the light cannot be even touched by the evil one as written in 1 John 5, verse 18. 1 John 3, verses 21 and 22 also promises that if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him. If you have committed a sin and lived in darkness, you must completely repent and break down the wall of sin before God. The enemy devil, the darkness, will then depart when you pray in the name of the Lord. This way, God has made every knee bow at the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verse 11 writes, And that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. While s on earth, Jesus obeyed God's will to the point of death solely for the glory of God. That's why He received such great glory. When we accomplish God's work like Jesus by not crying out and only following and obeying God's will, then God will glorify us for sure. But many desire to get recognition for their work and show off their feet. In relationship with others, people, when we see the church, some church workers, some people silently do their job, do their duties, and bear abundant fruits. But others, and, and they don't show off their work, but they just show their fruits. That's why their work is recognized. They are very appreciated. But other people, They make noises when they work. They show off what they did. They boast what they, how they toiled and work. And they show off their process as they... They show off their hard work and toil. So he, they seek others' praise and recognition. And they bear fruit. Who will be more praiseworthy? The one who silently did his duties would be more appreciated, if, even though the outcome is the same. Because the other person who made noises, they were already praised, they were already complimented. So, when the outcome is the same, the one who silently worked is praised more, appreciated more. But there are also other people who make noises, but they, they have no fruits. Father God, once, once we work like a worthless slave, we will be repaid in heaven. If we show off our work, if we boast, among people, there are people who boast their work, show off their work, and they receive what they have to receive in heaven already on this earth. How stupid and foolish this is, we have to know. Some people, some feel distressed and upset when not receiving recognition or not getting proper treatment as much as respect, expected. For example, what would you do if you are a team leader of some sorts, but don't get, don't get reserved seats or any special considerations at a meeting? Would you happily attend a meeting without any complaints? Or would you get annoyed and judge the organization? Would you get annoyed and judge the organization by thinking that they don't know the right order or have good manners? The light shepherd never expected to be treated any better as a senior pastor of a mega church. No matter who he met, the shepherd never expected to receive special treatment as the senior pastor of a mega church. 
or as a servant of God's power. Even he didn't ignore anyone, even though he was a pastor of a small church. He never did that. When attending events hosted by the Korean church community, he found it more comfortable to sit towards the end rather than in the front. The shepherd said he felt sorry and nervous to the point of sweating if he got to sit on the top altar while other older pastors didn't. He tried to avoid being exalted and honored and never expected to get more important roles when he got involved in some Christianity, Christianity event. Luke chapter 4 verse 11 tells us, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 18 also writes, For it is not he who commands himself that is approved, but he whom the Lord commands. May you all not May you all not try to exalt yourselves, nor try to get recognition from other people. I hope you will only stay humble and aim to receive approval and praise from God. Only when God, the Lord Almighty, acknowledges, praises, and exalts you, it is real. When that happens, you have the desire to give all glory to God the Father only from your heart. Novice believers are thankful for God's work even when receiving small answers and give all glory to God. But as people spend more days as a Christian and take on greater duties, a desire to gain glory for themselves rather than God can be seen. Why does this happen? Novice believers know that they are still lacking in faith, so, they, so when they receive answers, they believe it's entirely due to God's grace. Once their faith grows to a certain extent, the fact that everything is entirely due to God's grace may become questionable to them. Though they confess that with their mouth that things were accomplished only by the grace of the Lord, a part of them believes that it was their faith and obedience that caused God to work. This is dangerous. This is when arrogance begins, in, begins to sprout. You have to check whether you have such a heart. You have to be vigilant against yourself. May all church workers examine themselves to see and see if they have such a mindset. I hope everyone will become spiritual workers who have no self but only God and the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, Apostle Paul gave much glory to God, to Father God, through great and wonderful works of power. But what was the confession he always made from his heart? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10 records, We course, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace toward me did not prove vain, but I labor even more than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God with me. Apostle Paul was always thankful for the Lord's grace and love and gave all glory solely to God. May you all give glory to God in everything you do with a blameless heart so that God can glorify so that God can glorify and exalt you as well. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will be blameless like the Lord, not quarrel with anyone, and pursue peace and sanctification with all men, thereby coming forth as the beautiful prize who can boldly run into our Lord's arms. Let's think over the message in our prayer. Let's 
이해 안 되고 변론하고 있는 모습은 있지 않은지 영 상대는 답답하다 왜 저렇게 자기를 주장할까 하나 그 모습이 내 마음 내 모습은 아닌지 항상 나를 살피어서 어느 누구와도 아무런 다툼도 없는 오직 선과 사랑의 모습만 있게 하여 주옵소서 또한 나를 들리는 모습이 얼마나 어리석은지요 하나님이 높이셔야 이것이 참인데 나는 낮아지고 낮아지면 하나님이 나를 높이시고 하나님의 영광을 마음껏 구했다면 하늘에 무한한 상급을 주실 것인데 이러한 믿음과 소망으로 충성하며 오직 아버지의 영광을 위해 살아가는 복된 성도님들 되게 하여 주옵소서 감사드리며 우리 주 예수 그리스의 도 이름으로 기도하옵나이다. 아멘. 환자를 위해 기도합니다. Let's make pray for the uh, uh, sick. Please lay your hands on your sick parts and, and lay your hands on your chest with your heart's desire. Father God of goodness, on the seventh day we came to you to worship you and please lay your hands on to all people who are receiving this prayer for the sick. In and out of Korea, all across the world, in, in our branch churches and associations, and GCM viewers, please lay your hands on them and work for them. For, please lay your hands from their head to toe. All diseases and germs and viruses, let them be scorched by the fire of the Holy Spirit. I command in the name of Jesus Christ, all diseases, germs and viruses, be scorched and be driven away. Let them be cleansed and be perfect. Please lay your hands on them and let them be strengthened. Let them have no disease or germs. Let them have no tumor or inflammations. Please scorch them with the fire of the Holy Spirit and make them perfect and perfectly healed. Please strengthen their weaknesses. Please fill them with the energy. Please scorch them with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Please fill them with the inspiration of the fullness of the Spirit. Please give them new strength and strengthen them. Please strengthen their joints, ner nerves, and tissues and cells. Please strengthen them. Please let them hear better, see better. Please let them have strong bones and please heal their bones, heal their fractures. Please let them recover quickly. Let them have no after effects. Please protect our members in your loving grace and please bless their, protect their businesses and workplaces and protect them from any disasters or accidents. Please protect them with the Father of the Holy Spirit and with our Lord's blazing eyes. Please help our students do their duties well and let them love God first. Let them Please be with all the mommy members who are in branch and also should have churches. Please give them peace and protect them. Let them cry out and pray fervently and change themselves. Thank you. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.